Welcome to ITTV for Form 5 Chemistry. The title of this lesson, Detergents. In the previous lesson, we already looked at soap. We know soap is formed by reacting an alkali with a fat or an oil in a process called saponification. We know about the cleaning action of soap, how it reduces surface tension, it disassociates, the hydrophobic part enters the grease, the hydrophilic part stays in the water, and how when the water is agitated, the grease is pulled apart. We know that soap does not work in hard water because when the soap molecule reacts or is in the, in the presence of calcium and magnesium ions, it forms this insoluble salt called scum. So in the 40s and 50s, 1940s and 1950s, we invented another compound that could work in hard water. It's called a detergent. Detergents are made from petroleum products. What we do with the detergent is this. We take long chain hydrocarbons and then react it with concentrated sulfuric acid. When we do that, we get this long chain hydrocarbon with a sulfuric acid head. Then we take it and we react it with an alkali to create almost an identical molecule to the soap molecule. Let's go up to the board and have a look at how we make these molecules of detergent. There are two basic processes. One using just the long chain hydrocarbon, which I'll draw like this, which is represented by the symbol R. So we take this long chain hydrocarbon and react it with concentrated sulfuric acid. What we produce from here is called an alkyl sulfonic acid. So the long chain hydrocarbon is connected to the sulfuric acid. Like so. So this is called an alkyl sulfuric acid or alkyl sulfonic acid. Now we can take this and then react it with sodium hydroxide in what would be called a neutralization reaction. So we take this and we react it with sodium hydroxide. What will happen is the sodium will attach itself here to produce our salt which will become sodium alkyl sulfonate. So we get the long chain hydrocarbon connected to the sulfuric acid head that was originally here. Sorry, this should be a single bond. Connected to the O and an Na+. And like I said, this is called sodium alkyl sulfonate. Okay? And this is your detergent molecule. When you put it into water, what will happen is it will disassociate just like normal. The sodium will leave over here. This area represents your hydrophilic area. And over here, the hydrocarbon tail, because remember hydrocarbons are insoluble in water, this represents your hydrophobic. So this is how you basically produce a detergent. Remember, the alkyl part comes from petroleum, concentrated sulfuric acid to produce the alkyl sulfuric or sulfonic acid, and then you react it with sodium hydroxide to produce the sodium alkyl sulfonate. 
We can also do the same thing, but adding benzene. So here, what we do is we take the alkyl, we react it with benzene to create alkyl benzene, then react it with the sulfuric acid, and then react it with the sodium hydroxide to get alkyl benzene sulfonate. Sodium alkyl benzene sulfonate, if we use sodium hydroxide, or potas potassium, I beg your pardon, benzene sulfonate if we react it with potassium hydroxide. Let's go back to the slide and have a look at these detergents in a bit more detail. Detergent is made from concentrated sulfuric acid, sodium hydroxide and hydrocarbon from petroleum. Reaction between alkyl sulfonic acid and sodium hydroxide will produce sodium alkyl sulfate. In the slide, the R represents the hydrocarbon. As we said, we could also do it using benzene. So the reaction between alkyl benzene sulfonic acid and sodium hydroxide will produce sodium alkyl benzene sulfonate. Both of these are detergents. So remember, the detergent is the sodium salt of an alkyl sulfonic acid or alkyl benzene sulfonic acid. The cleaning action of detergent. Same as soap, detergent molecule disassociates to form ROSO3 negative or R benzene SO3 negative. Its anion has R, which is the hydrocarbon chain, as the hydrophobic part and OSO3 negative or SO3 negative as the hydrophilic part. So, if we just go back to the board and have a look. So remember what we said, the hydrocarbon chain represents the hydrophobic part and the area that comes from the concentrated sulfuric acid, that represents your hydrophilic. Sorry, the hydrophilic only needs one L. So that's your hydrophilic head. This part will dissolve in the water and this part will dissolve in the grease. Let's go back to the slide. How detergents work. The hydrophobic hydrocarbons are repelled by water but are attracted to oil and grease. The hydrophilic end of the same molecule means that one end of the molecule will be attracted to water while the other side is binding to oil. Effectiveness of detergent as a cleaning agent. Detergents are effective in hard water as well as soft water. It does not form scum with magnesium 2 plus ions or calcium 2 plus ions found in hard water. Magnesium and calcium salts of the detergent ions are soluble. Detergents are effective in acidic solutions. Detergents contain additives to enhance its effectiveness as a cleaning agent. Detergents can have the structure of the hydrocarbon chain to be modified to suit the cleaning task. Example, to make shampoo and dish cleaner. Environmental problems caused by detergents. Detergents which have branched hydrocarbon chains are not biodegradable. Detergents which have straight hydrocarbon chains are, however, biodegradable. So try to remember this because this is another common question that comes out in examinations. Because detergents have this problem about with relation to biodegradability, remember, branched hydrocarbons are not biodegradable, straight chains are biodegradable. Phosphates in detergent, sodium tripolyphosphate, are nutrients which promote the growth of algae and water plants in ponds. This reduces the sunlight and oxygen content in the water. And then what happens is you get a process called eutrophication occurring. Eutrophication will cause the water or all 
the animals and plants in the water to basically become dead and unusable. Sodium hypochlorite in detergents releases chlorine gas that is poisonous as well as acidic. Laundry detergents. Some laundry detergents have enzymes to help in the removal of biological stains. Example, grass or blood. Compare soap and detergent. Let's have a look at the soap first. Soap, the source is fatty acid. It is difficult to rinse and tends to stay inside the fibre. The functional group is determined by the structure of the fatty acid group found in oil and fat. It forms scum with hard water. Soaps are biodegradable. Now let's compare the soap to the detergent. The source of detergent are petroleum. Detergents rinse well with water used in hand detergents. The functional group of detergents can be modified to specific tasks. It does not form scum and is generally not biodegradable. Remember, if they are branched hydrocarbons, they are not biodegradable, but if they are straight chain, they are biodegradable. Let's try a question. The diagram shows the structural formulae of a detergent. What is are the processes involved during the preparation of detergent? So, remember what we said earlier? We've got two steps in the production of our detergent. First, we're taking the hydrocarbon and reacting it with the concentrated sulfuric acid. And then we're taking the acid and reacting it with an alkali. So the two steps, the second one, acid and alkali, is definitely neutralization. But the first step, what do you call it when you make this hydrocarbon with a head? Can you remember? Let's have a look at the answers. Saponification, hydrolysis, neutralization, or saponification and neutralization. The answer is D. Saponification and neutralization. So remember the first step where you're making the alkyl sulfonic acid or alkyl benzene sulfonic acid, that is saponification. The second step when you react with the alkali, that is neutralization. Another question Which of the following differences between soap and detergent is true? Soap is more powerful, detergent less powerful. Soap does not form scum in hard water, detergent forms scum in hard water. Soap harmful to aquatic life, detergent harmless to aquatic life. Finally, soap, the raw material is fat or oil, detergent, the raw material is petroleum. Think about it and choose the correct answer. If you answered, let's have a look and see if we've got the right answer. The answer is D. Soap's raw material is fat or oil. Detergent's raw material is petroleum. Third question. Detergent is more effective as a cleaning agent in hard water compared to soap. Explain why. Now remember here, it's to deal with the formation of scum using calcium and magnesium ions with soap and with detergent, remember, the calcium and magnesium ions form a salt that is soluble. You need to put this in two sentences. Write it out. If you've done it, let's check the answer. Soap forms insoluble scum in hard water, whereas detergent forms soluble salt in hard water. So try to remember this. Soap forms scum, detergent forms soluble salt. And remember, the ions that we are thinking about here are the Ca2 plus and Mg2 plus ions. Finally, a quick summary. Detergent is made from hydrocarbon, from petroleum. Detergent 
is the salt of an alkyl sulfonic acid or alkyl benzene sulfonic acid. Detergents are more effective than soap. Remember, the key thing to remember is detergents form soluble salts with calcium and magnesium ions, whereas soap forms insoluble salt with these two ions, which is called scum. Also remember, straight chain detergents are biodegradable, but branched chains are not biodegradable. Finally, remember we can add enzymes to our detergents to help with biological stains. Also, we can add whitening agents, perfumes, and all sorts of other things because we can change the shape of the detergent so that it has a specific task. That's all the time we have for this lesson. Thank you for watching ITTV.